Shalom covering mine, Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. And friends, uh, we need to want to do a little recap of what we were reporting on yesterday. Of course, we had all kinds of um, those that were against us coming in, in fact, trying to spam the channel there uh, with videos that they were saying is the real news about what's happening in Syria and that we were fake news. Uh, you know, we do try to deal with, you know, watching comments like this because there's a lot of detractors out there that do not agree with Israeli News Live and are trying to promote propaganda in the region. But, of course, Israeli News Live, we do, you know, there are times we do make mistakes, but we always try to correct those mistakes that we make and, uh, and keep things going on the up and up. And we try to be very honest in our reporting because we're not interested in propaganda. We're not inter interested in having a bias one way or the other, but telling people the truth. But once again, the very things that we reported, uh, because we happen to be there first on it, have been also supported by three mainstream media outlets at this point now. CBS News, BBC, and RT, all confirming the very information that we were sharing with you yesterday about the counterattack that the U.S. did against Syrian forces in the region of Deir Ezzord province there. Now, we did, of course, the, the, the accounts that are brought out with BBC, uh, CBS and RT also helped us to, to better hone in on exactly what was happening on some of the things that were very sketchy for us in the beginning. Uh, and, he, and as well, we also noticed a little bit of uh, differing opinions about what was happening there. Russia taking one side, the Syrian government taking another side, the United States taking yet another side. Uh, on the events there. So we did not know for sure when we first reported what was going on, but there was a lot of people that tried to say, no, there were not Russian forces killed in the attack. And we didn't say, we called it Russian contractors because that's what our sources were sharing with us on the ground. How that actually translated out, we weren't sure about as of yet. CBS, though, was one of the first ones to come in behind what we reported. It said forces hit by U.S. and Syria include Russian mercenaries, official says. That's a Pentagon official that actually stated that. According to the BBC, they say Syria war, Assad's government accuses U.S. of massacre. And of course, the Syrian government was saying a hundred were killed as well. Those that were saying that we were, this was totally fabricated. And of course, RT News, Russia comes out and the Russian ambassador that speaks about it slams the U.S. presence of being there, lets you know that Moscow is pretty upset about what did happen, but Russia's really downplaying and saying there were only 25 wounded. But the Syrian government says there were 100 killed, according to the BBC. And of course, CBS News and BBC both acknowledge that there were Russian mercenaries that were of the target inside of there. Now, as we did say, what we did see in there the, from the French news that we were sharing with you is that the U.S. was speaking about how this all went down. They said that it was the Free Syrian Army base that was targeted. <clears throat> of course, there is uh, conflicting reports on that as well. RT is also reporting the Russians said that the, the attack was not coordinated with Russia, so therefore they did kind of go on their own, but that they were actually targeting an ISIS cell that was, pro that was protecting an oil field that they were trying to take back that was near that region. So there is differing reports on that. What is interesting though, CBS says here, uh, pro-regime forces that attack a Syrian democratic forces, the SDF headquarters in northern Syria, and were hit and returned by U.S. airstrikes included Russian mercenaries, according to a Pentagon official. If Russians are among those who were killed, this would mark the first time a U.S. airstrike has killed Russians in Syria, CBS News David Martin reports. All right, now, I would have to say, well, that may be true as far as Americans, but we have to remember what was about a year, a year two years ago there when, again, in the same region of Deir Ezzord, when, when the Syrian forces come under a major heavy attack by NATO allies, which did not include actually American planes, I believe it was British, that bombed for over an hour, and Russia was constantly on the radio saying, you are not bombing the right people, you are bombing uh, the Syrian forces, which also include never reported by Russia, 13 Russian soldiers that were killed. All right. So Russia does tend to make light of the matter. And I think that's also to help morale and to keep it uh, away from enemy hands of knowing what the truth is about what happens in war. And that is also done by the U.S. as well in war. Never tell you the truth about how many wounded or dead are actually 
killed in battle so that way it doesn't cause an, a public outcry uh, but anyway cbs reported that there bbc says syria war assad government accused us of massacre goes on to say here that uh they carried that the u.s carried out a brutal massacre with bombing attack in Deir Azor province the overnight air artillery strikes killed an estimated 100 pro-government fighters near the euphrates river according to the u.s it claimed a right to self-defense, saying it was responding to an attack on its coalition forces. The Pentagon said Russian mercenaries were also killed, but Russia denies having personnel in the area. All right then, Russian mercenaries, though, could be like what we saw in Afrin. Just recently, we shared with you, showing you the video footage of two coffins leaving Afrin with British flags on them. No, I take that back. We didn't share it with you guys. We were on Paul Bagley's program. We shared that there. Speaking there about that, there were two coffins taken out from Afrin that were British mercenaries fighting along with the Kurds there in Afrin that were killed by the Turkish, being sent back home in boxes draped with British flags on them. It's very troubling to see this, you know, because Russian mercenaries, Russia may be aware of them being there. They may be fighting along with the pro-Syrian forces there, but Russia is very cautious about acknowledging them as actual soldiers, as we see even in the case of Ukraine. That way, it's easier to say they weren't Russian soldiers or Russian advisors. But the mere fact that Russia is in a major upset, Moscow slams illegal U.S. presence in Syria's Pentagon reserves right for its defensive attacks, and the Russian U.N. ambassador really reminding his counterparts that in a closed-door meeting that if the U.S. wasn't there, this wouldn't be happening. But yet at the same time, making light of it, saying there were only 25 wounded in the attack. That lets you know, just like it was a couple of years ago, Russia retaliated, dropped a bunker buster in the mountains of Aleppo, knocking out... <laughs> an intelligence uh, base there that killed Qatarians, Saudis, Turks, even one or two Israeli officials and a, one American intelligence officer. Of course, the UN went into a major uproar and mainstream media didn't want to cover that one either. But I think more and more we're being a little bit more pressure on mainstream media, forcing them to have to come out and deal with these particular, this particular type of information. And we know that BBC monitors closely Israeli News Live, as does RT. And who knows who all else covers it as well. But nonetheless, the U.S. did use some pretty heavy firepower. There's reports of F-22s, F-15, uh, Strike Eagle was used in it. Also, uh, a C-130 uh, attack that has the big gunners on the side. And even uh, Apache helicopters were said to be part of that force that came in. So as the BBC reports there that the Assad regime is saying that it was a massacre, uh, then I can see why they would believe that to be so. And of course, it is still conflicting reports over what the target really was. The Syrian government saying that they were after the oil field. The U.S. say that they were trying to attack the Free Syrian Army Air Base. And I can understand America retaliating because we do have American forces there embedded with the Free Syrian Army. Although I may not agree with our presence there, they are American soldiers, and we do support the American soldiers. We care for them. So be in prayer for both sides. I think that's the right thing to do. Anyway, i got some very interesting things we're going to be uploading to you guys later. We were at a uh, rally last night in support of Trump. We were invited as Israeli News Live to cover the event. We, As far as I know, we were the only uh, news organization was there, but uh, we're going to be running two separate uh, videos about that may not be able to get to it till tomorrow because I have to make a trip this evening uh, but uh, very interesting uh, Roger Stone was the guest speaker there he spoke about the Kennedy assassination which I'd like to air separately but something else happened there the I think it was something that is going to go down in history uh, that uh, something that people have never have not seen in a long time the name of Jesus Christ was mentioned in the opening remarks. And I have never, to my knowledge, have never seen someone exalt Jesus Christ in a political rally before. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Shalom.